the function. Uh, we have seen the easiest method of approximating functions uh, that you already know, Taylor approximation, where we have approximated the function by Taylor polynomial. But we have seen that we have uh, disadvantages using that method. Uh, it is suitable to approximate using that method just when we need the approximations uh, close to the point x0, the point where um, is written the polynomial, Taylor polynomial. <coughs> so it is better to use other methods that uh, uses more points. And we have talked about, we have uh, mentioned uh, Lagrange interpolation. That is the method used when we have a set of points. So we continue the study of Lagrange interpolation, which is a method of approximating a function. When we have as given data a set of m plus one points, points or nodes, and we know the value of the function for this set of points. So we have m plus one information regarding the function. Function f is the function that is approximated knowing m plus one information about the function. There are two main cases when um, this procedure is applied. The first one is when we don't know the function, as is this example of census. So these are xi, the years, and values of the function for the years are given by these values uh, representing population. So here we don't know the function, just some values for a set of points. or we have seen the other uh, example when we know the function, but it's difficult to work with the, that function and it's better to work with polynomials. So we will find polynomials that, but, uh, that approximate the function and then for finding the value of the function for some other point, we will uh, take the value of the obtained polynomial. How we obtain the polynomial? We will see different uh, algorithms and procedures for finding the polynomial. The polynomial that is called Lagrange interpolation polynomial and is the polynomial of smallest degree that fulfills the following conditions. P of xi is equal to f of xi. So we look for a polynomial of smallest degree that fulfills m plus one conditions like this. P at the point xi is equal to f of xi. Uh, this means that the polynomial passes through the point coordinates xi f of xi. So in other words, is the polynomial of smallest through the given point. So if we have a set of points, Lagrange polynomial should pass through the points. These are Lagrange interpolation conditions. The polynomial is noted by LMF. So the for the polynomial that fulfills these conditions, we have this notation LMF. L M is its degree. If we have M plus one given points, degree of the polynomial, the smallest degree of the polynomial that fulfills Lagrangian conditions is M. So that's why we have that M here, L, M, and F is the function that is approximated. So this is 
notation, the notation for Lagrangian LMF. Lagrange interpolation conditions, and um, <clears throat> we have the following forms of the polynomial. Uh, we have proved in the previous lecture that this polynomial exists. We had uh, that system with Van der Mond matrix. Uh, that system has a unique polynomial exists and is unique. And for finding the polynomial, we have the following formula. So Lagrange interpolation polynomial is given by the following formula. Sum i from 0 to m li of x f of xi f of x i are given and l i of x denotes some polynomials of m degree called Lagrange fundamental polynomials. And we will see how we get this. So lmf of x sum l i f of x i. In order to find Li, the fundamental polynomials, <coughs> we introduce the following notations. We consider u of x as x minus x0, x minus x1, x minus xm. So the product x minus xj, j from 0 to m. We use ui of x as a notation for u of x divided to x minus xi. So from the product x minus x0, x minus x1, and so on, x minus xm is missing x minus xi. And this gives ui. So ui is the product j from 0 to m, j different of i, x minus xj. And having these notations, we write the formula for li. li of x will be ui of x over ui of xi. This is the formula for fundamental polynomials. So we have to write u of x, then ui, and for each i from 0 to m, we have li as ui over ui of xi. <coughs> we will see for an example how we get this. This is a classical formula for Lagrange polynomial. Uh, the first formula that was used. Uh, this is suitable for um, theoretical problems. It's easy to apply, uh, but it's not so good for algorithms. It has some disadvantages as um, <coughs> If we add or subtract a point, we have to start again the computation from the beginning. So this is a disadvantage. And we have a lot of computation to, to be done here in uh, the algorithm in order to compute uh, Li. We will see some other methods suitable for the algorithms, but for theoretical problems, this is one of the formula that um, it is used. Uh, we will uh, see an equivalent form of this formula too. You <clears throat> may use also that one. Uh, and we will prove that. But first, uh, I want to see that um, the polynomial introduced here of this form 
is a is the same polynomial as the polynomial that we have seen in the previous lecture that we said that in general form is written like here uh, a0 plus a1 x plus so on am x2 m power we had that system and this was the form that we have considered for Lagrange polynomial. And we may prove that the polynomial uh, given uh, using fundamental uh, polynomials can be written as the other polynomial, as a0 plus a1x plus so on am x to the m power. And if that polynomial fulfills the condition that at xj is equal to f of xj will be the same with LMF. So we consider <clears throat> two notations, q and p, for both polynomials. Both should fulfill the interpolation conditions. We have m plus one interpolation conditions. q and p are poly polynomials of m degree. The difference C, which is Q minus P, should be a polynomial also of, of maximum M degree. And we have that D X J equal to Q of X J minus P of X J equal to zero for M plus one points. But D is a polynomial of maximum M degree. Having m plus one zeros, it means that d is equal to zero. So it follows that q is the same with p. So there exists a unique polynomial that fulfills Lagrange interpolation conditions. It can be written like this and is similar with writing. Uh, the polynomial as a0 plus a1x plus so on a m to a, x uh, multiplied with x to m power. We will see also for examples that from this form we get the other one. And now we will write another form for, for fundamental polynomials that is also used. If you wish, you may use this one. This form does not use uh, that does not use um, ui, but just u of x. So <clears throat> li can be obtained as u of x over x minus xi multiplied with derivative of u at the point xi. How we prove this? We have that we know by definition that li of x is ui of x divided to ui of xi. u of x is ui of x is u of x divided to x minus xi. <clears throat> so u of x is x minus xi multiplied with ui of x. Derivative of u will be, could you tell me? Derivative of u is Somebody. Ui x plus ui divided derivative uh, times x minus xi. Yes, thank you. Good. So we have this equality. And if we take derivative of u at x i, we will get that is equal to ui of xi. 
So we have proved that ui of xi is derivative of, of u at xi. So li of x can be written as it is ui of x divided to ui of xi. So is u of x divided to x minus xi. And instead of ui of xi, we have derivative of u at xi. So we have got the form that is similar with definition. So we, we may use also this form for finding the polynomial if we don't want to use ui. We may use u of x and its derivative. So both are similar. <clears throat> I have a question. Um, yeah. Can does you is you why defined on x on x i? I mean, in the point x i, uh, the should the, not be a a node. X i x i are the nodes, and x is not a node. X is the point where we want to approximate. Yeah, I guess we wouldn't want to. Uh, would we want to approximate in XI or we know already the value? We know the value in XI. This is these are the given data. We oh. know the values in XI. So XI zero to M is the set of given points where we know the value of the function. So it's not necessary to approximate the function for that set of points, for these xi. We need to approximate in some other point x, which is different of xi. So Got it will it. not be a problem here at the denominator because x is another point different of xi. Does not make sense to consider x equal to xi because in xi we know the value of the function is given. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, to be more clear, here for the classical example, xi are the years, f of xi known are the values of the population in the given years. Uh, a problem like this that does make sense if we want to approximate in some year where we don't know the population or for some other examples or, or problems when we don't have measurements. Where we, uh, so here for 1975, we may approximate applying this formula. OK, so X different of X I. <clears throat> the operator LM is linear. We have mentioned in the first lecture what is this property and uh, that we uh, uh, prove shortly as LM of alpha F plus beta G should be alpha LM F plus beta LM G. Is just written the polynomial for the function alpha f plus beta g. And we will apply this formula for two examples. First, we consider the simplest example of Lagrange interpolation when we have just two nodes, two given points where we know the value of the function x0 and x1 and we find the polynomial that approximate the function having just these two information. So we will apply the theory. m is equal to what value? One. One, right? 
So we have the nodes x0, x1 till xm. So in this case, m is equal to 1. m gives degree of the polynomial. So pay attention that um, when we have more points, uh, pay attention at the value of m. You should get a polynomial of m degree. The polynomial L1f of x is given by formula 2. So is sum i from 0 to 1 li of x f of xi. f of xi are known. We have L0 of x f of x0 plus L1 of x f of x1. F of x0 and f of x1 are considered known, are given, and we should uh, obtain L0 and L1. For this, we take u of x is x minus x0, x minus x1. u0 of x, which is equal to, could you help me? x minus x1. Minus x1. u1 is x minus x0. Right. <coughs> um, I want to mention that uh, because you don't have a seminary, uh, we will uh, work here some examples for each part of the theory. Uh, you will see that you understand better the theory by the examples. So please work with me. And if you have more answers during the semester, you will get an extra point at the written exam to be a reward for you. So let's work together <laughs> at the example. Uh, so for this, we have u0, u1, and now <coughs> we will have L0 of x equal to x minus x1 divided to x0 minus x1. It is u0 of x divided to u0 of x0. <coughs> is x1. Yes, is OK. x0 minus x1. <coughs> over u1 of x1, which is x minus x0 over x1 minus x0. So the polynomial will be L1 f of x equal to x minus x1 over x0 minus x1 f of x0 plus x minus x0 over x1 minus x0 f of x1. Who knows what is this, what we have obtained? This is the equation of what? Of the polynomial that should approximate the function f. This is right, but in geometry, represent what? Line. A line, or in analysis, you had that. Yes, is the equation of the line. The line passing through that two points, passing through x0, f of x0, the points of coordinates x, 0, f of x0, let's take like this, and x1, f of x1. 
So we have obtained the equation of the line, the line passing through two points. Is a polynomial of m degree, m was one. Look at its expression. So in general, we know that if we have just two information, the approximation, the polynomial that approximates the function will be the line that passes through the point. And now for three points, we will see how we find the polynomial. We consider the following example, x minus one, zero, and three, f of x, eight, minus two, and four, And we have to approximate the function. We don't know the expression of the function. Uh, we have to approximate the function at the point minus 0 0.5. So having this three information, we have to find the polynomial that approximates the function f and to find the approximation at the point minus 0 0.5. So we follow the same steps. We have m equal to two. two, right? So we have x zero minus one, x one zero, x two three. So m is two. So we have to obtain a polynomial of second degree. L to F Lagrange polynomial in general at X is sum. Here we look. Sum A I from zero to two L zero of X F L I of X sorry F of X I. And now I write using L zero L one and L two. L0 f of x0 plus L1 f of x1 plus L2 f of x2 equal to L0 multiplied with f of x0 is that's eight so it's eight L0 eight L1 multiplied with minus two. So you look in the table at the second line, the values of the function, plus L2, F of X2, which is four. So we have to obtain the polynomials L0, L1, L2, and then to replace here, and we will get the final form of the polynomial. In order to obtain Li, we write u of x, which is x plus one, x minus zero, x minus e. U zero of x is So having this, we'll find L i. L zero is u zero of x divided to u zero of x zero, which is x x minus three over how much? It's uh, zero uh, times six zero minus three. 
and the value is and is uh, minus four. Oh, four. Sorry. Four. Yes, it's minus minus four, so it's four. Thanks. L one. U one of x. U one of x one, which is x plus one, x minus three, over how much? Minus three. Okay. And the last one, u2, u2 of x2, which is x plus 1, x over 12. 12, right. Okay, and now we replace in the formula of the polynomial. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yes. Could you explain again why is it 12 minus 3 and 4 there? Uh, what is 12 minus 3 and 4? U0 of x0, which is what we have at numerator. So x, x minus 3 for x equal to x0. And x0 is minus 1. So we have. Oh, so we just replace the values. Yes. Ex okay. Yes. I, I and for uh, the others, we re you replace with x1 and with x2, the values from the table. Okay, thank you. So is what we have a denominator is the same with the numerator, but at the point xi. And now you replace at the formula of the polynomial. And we you have x, x minus 3 over 4 multiplied with 8 plus x plus 1, x minus 3 over minus 3 multiplied with minus 2 plus x, x plus 1 over 12 multiplied with 4. And please do uh, please find the polynomial and tell me what we, you get. Let's see some results. So you have here two, you have here three, and do the calculation and tell me the polynomial, please. I think it's minus four. Uh, you have computed in minus zero point five, or what? Uh, Why zero point five? I guess I. Mm. Miss tell, tell me uh, the general form, and then we will repla replace. By general form, you mean just a simplified version of what we have here? What? I didn't hear. Uh, by general form, you mean just a simplified version? Yes, yes. Like 2x times x minus 3? Yes, you have a common factor 3 and what you will get? 6x times x minus 3 plus uh, louder, please. Six x square times uh, x minus three plus two times x plus one times x minus three plus x. Times uh, give x. me a general no. Oh, oh, oh uh, you mean something multiplied okay. with x square x plus square. something multiplied with x plus a constant. Karina. Uh, um, 9 uh, x squared plus uh, 23 x minus 6 over x squared plus 23 x minus 6. Everything over 3. 
Uh, I think it's not 20. It's 21 and then it's simplified. Yes, it's something that is simplified by 3. 21. And uh, it will be 3x squared minus 7x minus 2. Yeah, I got that also. Are you agree? Yes. That's 3x squared minus yes. x minus 6. <laughs> 3x squared minus x minus 6. Yep. Somebody else? Some other results? Uh, I got the first one. Oh, the Three. first one. Yeah. Three, seven, and two. Okay, so I think the first one is the good result. But isn't it uh, with plus seven x? Yes, I uh, wanted to ask there because we have plus 21 as I see. So it's plus seven, right? No? I got mine. Mine got mine. I got minus. Okay. It's because it's minus three, minus three, uh, times minus three plus x. Yes, there you we have a minus. Okay. Minus so. Okay. Let's suppose this is the right form. If you are not sure, you will check again. It's an easy computation then. So having the form of the polynomial like this, in order to find the approximate value of the function at the point minus 0 0.5, we will take the value of the polynomial at minus 0 0.5, and this will be the approximation of the function. So you just replace here, so we have to 3, 1 over 4, I replace with one minus one over two to be easier. Minus seven or plus seven over two minus two. And this will be the approximation of the function at the point minus zero point five. So this is how Lagrange polynomial is obtained. The formulas look complicated, but you see that they are easy to apply. You follow the rules, you follow the formulas, and you will get the polynomial. This formula, as I already mentioned, is uh, suitable for theoretical problems, but has disadvantages when we have large sets of data when we want to apply to practical problems. And we will see some uh, other methods that are suitable for algorithms, and also we will see some other methods suitable for theoretical and theoretical problems and algorithms. Um, a big disadvantage of this formula is that if we add or subtract a point, we have to start again all the computation. So uh, we cannot use the last polynomial. So if we have a polynomial for these three points, we cannot use it if we add a point to continue uh, the computation. It's not OK. We have to start again from the beginning because here using these formulas with u, you see that uh, all the fundamental polynomials depends on all points. So this is a big disadvantage for the algorithms in using this formula. We will see a transformation of this formula that will be used for the algorithms. This will be the formula that you will use in lab for the problems for lab. Uh, this one, no, the classical one, just for theoretical problems. So for the next lab, you will use the formula that is obtained in the following way. We have Lagrange polynomial, and we write like this, LMF of X is LMF divided to one. And 
it is checked, it's easy checked that sum of Li is one. So this one will be sum of Li, sum of fundamental polynomials. We divide the numerator and denominator by u of x. We denote by ai 1 over ui of xi. And the form that is obtained will be sum ai f of xi over x minus xi. Sum AI over X minus XI. Uh, this formula is an equivalent form with the previous, but halves the number of operations. Uh, this is called barycentric formula. And this will be the one that you will use for the algorithms for finding the polynomial, for finding Langrash polynomial. So you have to obtain AI for each I. You have to obtain UI of XI. UI is the product X minus X0, X minus X1, so on x minus xm, where is missing x minus xi. So you have a for and an if there in order to find ui of xi for each i, and then you, you will have two sums, and dividing the sums, you will get the value at the point x. So ai will be computed, f of xi are given, in the in our example, f of x i are these values, the population. X is the point where you want to approximate. So in this example is 1975. And xi are the given nodes, are the points where we know the value of the function. So are taken from this sequence. Two sums and you get the value. This is barycentric formula. <coughs> now we talk a little about the error. Uh, you, I have uh, mentioned that during numerical calculus, numerical analysis, we find methods for approximating solutions of mathematical problems. So we talk about approximations. So we are concerned about the error of approximation. So for all the theoretical uh, problems, we will analyze the error of approximating using that method. Of course, that it's obvious that uh, we have better approximations if we have more data. Uh, also, will have smaller error if the point where we want to approximate is close to the given data. This is also obvious. But we will prove these two, that if we have more data will be better, we will have better approximation, and also that if the point where we want to approximate is close to the given points, then we have good results. The error will be smaller. We will prove theoretically what I said. So we will find a form of the error, an expression of the error of approximating the function f by Lagrange polynomial. So if we write f approximated by LMF, we cannot put equality here. f is approximated by LMF. 
But if we write F equal to LMF plus RMF, then it's okay. RMF being denoting the error or the reminder. That's why it's denoted by R because we may call it remainder. Remainder or error of approximating F by LMF. And we will see the easiest form and the most applied form of the error of RMF. For this, we consider alpha, we prove the following result. We consider alpha as minimum of x, x being the point where we want to approximate, and the nodes, and beta maximum of x and the nodes. If F is of class CM of alpha, beta, derivable, then there exists a Xi, a point Xi in the interval alpha, beta, such that the error RMF of X is u of x over factorial of m plus 1 multiplied with derivative of order m plus 1 at the point C. This is the expression of the error of approximating f by the polynomial LMF. You see, that is u of x here. So if the distances between X and the nodes are large, then the error is large. So you see that we use here U of X, which is X minus X zero, X minus X one, X minus X so on, X minus X ten. And also uh, the error is smaller if we have more points because we divide by factorial of m plus 1. m plus 1 is the number of given data, of given points. We have x0, x1 till xm, so we have m plus 1 points. So we have factorial of m plus 1 here as denominator, so if we have larger values, we will have smaller error here. Uh, we will Prove this result. So please follow me. Uh, how we prove? Because we will use um, some uh, properties of Lagrange polynomial. So it is an int it is useful to follow the the proof. We consider the following notation. We denote by f of z the following determinant. Determinant that has as a first line U of Z and RMF of Z. Z being here the variable, the variable of the, this function. U of X and RMF of X is the second line, X being the point where we want to approximate. So we denote this determinant as f of z. We have that f of x is equal to zero, right? Because the two lines are equal. We want to check which is the value of f of x i. In order to find f of x i, we need u of x i and RMF of XI. U of X 
I write here is x minus x0, x minus x1, x minus xm. So u of xi will be how much? Zero. Zero, right. And there exists somewhere x minus xi, so, so is zero. RMF of xi will be, we look at the formula, RMF is f minus LMF. So will be f of xi minus LMF of xi equal to Somebody. Is it f of xi? f of xi? The final result? Um, yeah, I was thinking that um, somehow uh, L of M, LM of f would reduce to zero, but I'm not sure. It's not zero, but LMF of xi is somebody, is something here. LMF of xi is equal to not zero, as you said, but f of xi. Right. This is it. LMF of xi is f of xi. These are Lagrange interpolation conditions. LMF <laughs> is found like this. It's found such that to pass through xi, f of xi. OK, so LMF at the nodes at the given points should have the same value with values of the function for the given points. So should pass through the points xi f of xi, which means this, that is equal to f of xi. So we have zero here. OK, so final we, uh, we have f of x equal to zero and f of xi equal to zero i from zero to m because we have the first line equal to zero for all the given points for a, the points xi this means that f has how many zeros M plus two. Right, M plus two zeros. We have M plus one from the second, and also for X we have zero, so we have M plus two zeros. And here we apply a roll theorem, and we get that for the derivative has M plus one zeros, second has m and so on, derivative of order m plus one has one zero. This is uh, obtained applying a roll theorem. We recall some mathematical notions. So we have that there exists a point, there exists a zero, such that derivative of order m plus one at that point is equal to zero. So this means that exists at least one zero in the interval. And that zero is denoted by C. So we have proved that there exists a point C between alpha and beta. This is said by Roll theorem such that derivative of order m plus 1 at the point C is equal to 0. We have proved this. And now we will see 
What means derivative of order m plus 1 of the function f? Variable is z, so we have to derivate the first line. So we need we need the derivative of order m plus 1 of u. Am cineva are microfonul deschis. Flaviu, are. Ok. Uh, so, derivative of order m plus 1 of u is equal to, let's think, u of x is x minus x0 till x minus xm. Which is its degree? What M. is it? M? Uh, I guess uh, M plus 1, yeah. M plus 1, yes. It's not M, it's M plus 1 because we have uh, X minus X0, the first. So it's M plus 1. So we have to derivate a polynomial, uh, M plus 1 times a polynomial of M plus 1 degree. Let's, do you know? The value, or we think is it sum of x i from zero to m because it's the constant that's left. Mm, we have one as dominant coefficient. We have also this in mind. In mind, let's think of the second degree polynomial. If we derive it twice. Oh yeah, it's one. Sorry. Is not one. The one is the dominant coefficient. I don't know if you refer to that. Yeah, but when you derivate it uh, equally to the uh, degree of yes. the polynomial, wouldn't you just get the coefficient of the highest degree as the result? No, no, not just no, that. Yeah, because uh, do you have a factorial? Yes, it's a factorial. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, no problem. <laughs> it's it's good that you think about that, so it's okay. So x, uh, x uh, to the second power plus x plus one, for example. If we derive it twice, we get how much? Two. Two. But it's not clear for this, but for third degree polynomials, if we derivate twice, first we will have 3x squared, then we will have 3 times 2 times 1 plus something. Okay, uh, could, uh, there should be also the coefficient if it's uh, not different of 1. So we have factorial of for example, for the third degree polynomial, uh, derived it three times. So, for m plus one degree polynomial, derivated m plus one times, we will have factorial of m plus one. Okay. And this is the first is derivative of u m plus 1 times and we have derivate rmf of z also rmf of z and we have derivative of order m plus 1 we write also based on the formula of the error. The error is function minus polynomial. So it will be derivative of the function minus derivative of the polynomial. Derivative of order m plus 1 of the polynomial. We cannot say anything about the derivative of the function, but which is the value of derivative of the polynomial? Derivative of order m plus 1 of LMF. Q. 
Can you tell me which the order is? of the LMS M? Yes. That, that derivative M, M plus one times it would be zero. Right. This is zero because LMF is a polynomial of M degree. So derivative of order M plus one of a polynomial of M degree is zero. So there we have zero. So we have obtained for this derivative just derivative of the function. OK, now we <coughs> write again derivative of the function f at the point m plus one uh, of order m plus one at the point c should be zero. And having the values we have factorial of m plus one. We have derivative of f at the point c, u of x, rmf of x remains like this, and this is zero. And is that factorial of m plus one times rmf of x is u of x derivative of f c so rmf of x is u of x divided to factorial of m plus one derivative of order m plus one at the point c c being between alpha beta minimum and maximum of uh, the nodes and the point where we want to approximate so we have proved the form of the error. The form that shows that the error depends on the distances between the point where we want to approximate and the nodes and depends on number of nodes. What we will uh, use in uh, practical problems is not the expression this expression, but <clears throat> this inequality. We have the following corollary that says that absolute value of the error is less or equal to absolute value of u of x over factorial of m plus 1 multiplied with norm, infinity norm, of derivative and this norm is computed usually as maximum of absolute value x being in alpha beta so this gives an upper bound of the error so we have that the error less or equal to absolute value of u of x divided to factorial of m plus one and multiplied with maximum of absolute value of derivative of order n plus one of the function. And this gives a bound of the error, maximum bound of the error. <clears throat> and this is useful to know. Um, how compute this, we'll, uh, we will see for an example. And also we will talk about another example where we have to pay attention of the expression of the error. To pay attention to the expression of the error. So we illustrate this theory for two examples. First, we consider the problem where we know logarithm of 2, logarithm of 3, and logarithm of 5. These are given. So the given nodes are 2, 3, and 5. And we know the values of the function for these three points. 
We need to find logarithm of 76. If we don't know the previous result, that the error depends on the distances between x and the nodes. Here we have x0 equal to 2, x1 equal to 3, x2 equal to 5. And the point where we want to approximate is 76. So if we don't know the previous result, then we take these points, we find the polynomial and we take the value of the polynomial at the point 76. But it's not OK because we will get a very large error of approximation. So taking into account the previous result, what we will do? We will look for points close to 76 that can be written using 2, 3 and 5. Or we decompose 76 in order to have smaller values, and we look for the points that are close to that values. Let's take the second variant to have uh, smaller numbers. So 76 is equal to what values? Decompose 76 will be equal to. Uh, 2 to the power of 2 times 19. Right. Perfect. This is 76, so is 2 squared times 19. So logarithm of 76 will be 2 logarithm of 2, which is known, plus logarithm of 19. So the problem will be now to approximate logarithm of 19. For doing this, which will be the nodes, the given points, the known points? What do you think? It what? will be only two. Two. Six, zero. No, it's too far. This is far from 19. But how we will think similar to take values close to 19 where we know the value of the function. And we know the we, value. So 16 would be one. Right. Another. And 20. Another. 18. And another one. Fifteen. Fifteen. Yes, we have three and five or twenty-four. So this is the idea. To find uh, nodes points close to nineteen in this case, where well, we know the value of the function. And value of the function is uh, found based on the given information, based on 2, 3, and 5, and of course, using the properties of logarithm, properties of the function. Good. So this is an example to, to know that you have to pay attention how you use the information that you have to, to have in mind this form of the the error to have in mind the fact that the error depends on distances between the point and the nodes. And for the other example, we have to find a limit of the error for computing square root of 115 using x0 100 x1 121, x2 144. So the function is, the function that is used is square root of x. 
square root of x, right? M is equal to? Two. Two. So we have that R2F of x is less or equal to absolute value of u of x. x is 115 and we may write directly. So absolute value of 115 minus One hundred, one hundred fifteen minus one hundred twenty one U of X. One hundred fifteen minus one hundred forty four over which value? Six. six a factorial of three, which is six. Yeah. And multiplied with maximum of absolute value of derivative of order n plus one. So derivative of third order of the function. Maximum for the interval uh, that is obtained as minimum of the nodes and the point where we want to approximate, which means 100. And maximum, which is 144. This will be limit of the error. So you have to do here the uh, this product. And also what is necessary to be done is derivative of third order. So the function is square root of x, x to one over two. First derivative is equal to how much? 1 over 2x to the power minus 1 over 2. Right. Second derivative. Minus 1 over 4x uh, to the power minus 3 over 2. Right. And we need another one. Uh, 3 over 8x to the power minus 5 over 2. Right. And Maximum of this, of the last one, where is in 100 or 144? In 100. 100. So we have obtained the limit of the error, so will be maximum. This maximum uh, can be denoted as M3F. Maximum M3F denotes the maximum of the third derivative usually. If you wish to use this notation, will be 3 over 8, 10 to second power multiplied with minus 5 over 2. So it's 3 over 8, 10 to minus 5. And this is this value. You see that is a smaller, a small error of approximation, even if we have just three points. So this is an example of finding a bound of the error in approximating using Lagrange polynomial. And this is all for today. If you have questions. If not, this is it. I wish you a pleasant week. Nice week and see you next week. A sunny week.